Hey guys, Sibon here, and we have a couple of interesting topics for this video, but we're gonna begin with Regan Grimes and his most recent physique update, and also an announcement that his prep is starting, for what you're wondering, I'm sure you're not, of course for Arnold Classic. Now, he says, in the description here, he says cruising, and for ordinary people, for just uh, fitness fans who follow him, he has a lot of followers, so not all of them are hardcore bodybuilding fans, you can think anything of that, cruising, what the hell does that mean? But for us bodybuilders, for us who follow bodybuilding a lot more, we know that this means that he's on low dose of probably just testosterone or something else, some other compound. He's on low doses, maybe maybe testing something else, like DECA, I don't know. Whatever it means, it means that he's not off, but he is using something, a small dose, and now his prep starts on 13th, so in about 5 days, and then he's gonna start blasting. So maybe after a couple of weeks, after his uh, prep starts, he's gonna write another description of a physique update, and he's gonna say blasting. And you guys that follow my channel, that follow bodybuilding, you will know that it means that he's on high doses of gear. And for other people, they will think just, you know, he's training hard, or whatever. Alright, but in all seriousness, he's starting his prep, and of course, of course he's starting his prep, because Arnold Classic just increased the prize money up to $200,000. That's insane, last year it was $130,000, which is a lot of money, I mean, for a, for a bodybuilding show, that's a lot. And now, $200,000. This should be motivating enough for all bodybuilders to compete, really, like, maybe not top 5, maybe even top 5, maybe not top 3. But as for now, we know that last year's winner, Nick Walker, is not doing it. He said that on the Fuera Biaz podcast, Ian Valier, the runner-up, also not doing it. These two guys will focus on Mr. Olympia. Nick is already qualified and Ian is gonna try to qualify with another show that's closer to the Mr. Olympia. Arnold is like mid-season. Big Remy also not doing it, Dennis James confirmed this, there is no way he's gonna do it, and we have William Bonac who is probably doing it, and I don't know about Hari Chupan, but I think it's a problem for him to get to the US, so I don't think he will bother, he's qualified for the Mr. Olympia, so we probably won't see him either, Brandon Curry, uh, maybe, maybe, who knows, I don't think so, he's also Mr. Olympia winner, he's the runner-up at the Mr. Olympia, so he'll probably try and focus on beating Big Remy. he's not gonna give a Big Remy any advantage, he needs to grow, especially in the legs, in order to beat Big Remy, he needs more muscle, so he needs a, a longer off-season, he needs to come fresh. So, this Arnold Classic, even though the, the money price is so high, it's open, it's up for the grabs, anybody can take it. And why not this guy right here, Regan Grimes? Why the hell not? Yeah, I know, I know he's much more of a bodybuilder on social media than he's on stage. He has a lot, a lot of followers, a lot of fans. Whenever I make a video about him, I get a lot of views, so apparently there is something to him. Now, I do see potential. Everybody can see it. Jay Cutler said it first, basically. He said he has the structure to win the Mr. Olympia. And really, you cannot really find a lot of flaws in his physique. It's all about maturing, you know? It's all about getting the details, the deep cuts, getting a bigger, rounder, fuller. He does look very big and round and full, but on stage, especially in the legs, and some other body parts like arms, he doesn't look that big, that thick, compared to the other top open pros. So for him to win the Mr. Olympia, he needs to work more. And now, when he's working with Milo Sharchev, I'm pretty sure that these guys will kill it together, because Milos is a maniac, and apparently they are clicking very well. He's pushing Regan to his limits, and last time we saw it on stage, it looked phenomenal. It looks much better than he ever looked. So, be my guest. Arnold Classic, there is a lot of time. They started working after the Mr. Olympia, so in a short amount of time, they made so much progress. Arnold Classic is not gonna happen in a couple of months. More than that, so I'm expecting huge progress from Regan, I'm expecting Milos to bring him in the best shape possible, and I don't know, maybe this is gonna be a breakthrough year for Regan, even if he doesn't win the Arnold, yeah, that's, that's tough, even if he's in like top 3, that's gonna be a huge step for him, so I'm expecting him to bring his best, and if he does, and if he improves, he can probably shock the world. So, as I said, Nick Walker is not doing it, good for Egan, but not that good for us, I would love to see him on stage again, 
But I get him. I mean, he didn't have a break since he won his pro card. He did Chicago, couple of months later, New York Pro, then Arnold Classic, then Mr. Olympia. He didn't have an off season in like two years, so he should have some time off. He deserves it. At least him. Who else? But Blessing? I think it's time for Blessing to start prepping soon for the Arnold. Why not? Arnold Classic uh, Ohio is invitational, so you get invited, you get everything paid, flight, hotel, everything. And if they invite Blessing, you should definitely do it. I don't see why they wouldn't. He's a really popular bodybuilder, he's a good pro, he did well. When he did Indy and uh, New York Pro, New York Pro he kind of failed, but in Indy he was good. He was like top 5, something like that. So why not? Why not? He's a very, very famous. He has a very popular Instagram account. He's, he's a funny guy. And um, so definitely they should invite him. And right now, as you can see on these photos here, he looks freaking massive. It seems like he gained a lot of muscle. I mean, last time we saw him on stage, he looked rather stringy. And he talked about it, he was chasing the shredded glutes, the conditioning, and that's why he lost a lot of muscle. And if he does things differently, I mean, him and his coach, Chad Nichols, if they did things a little bit differently, if they, you know, try to keep the fullness a little bit more, and also with, like, almost another year of training, he probably matured a little bit more, so he probably won't have to push that hard for conditioning. If that is the case, if he comes bigger, and with, let's say, same or more matured physique, uh, he's gonna be a serious threat. Look at that side leg. That, that That's really massive. It's really big. His upper body is really impressive as well, but you can't really compare him to Nick Walker. Nick is just so complete. Uh, he has basically no gaps in every pose. Like here, for example, uh, Blessing has a little bit higher lats. Nick doesn't. Blessing's biceps are not as peaky as, as Nick's. Uh, Blessing's triceps are a little bit flatter than Nick's. Uh, he maybe has a little bit bigger and fuller chest, that's, that's Nick's uh, weak point, but that's about it. Everything else is just on Nick's side. You don't see Nick's legs, but he's definitely much better than, than Blessing in that, especially from the front and from the rear. But as far as the back itself, Blessing has pretty thick back, especially like upper traps. And uh, Nick, yeah, his back is good, it's not his best body part, but he, he is still much better than Blessing. He's just way more compact, complete, and yeah, I think he's just a different level. Nick, I mean, top 5 Mr. Olympia Blessing is not on that level, but Blessing is no joke, man. I mean, he still needs to work uh, to fix a lot of body parts and bring better conditioning, but I think he should do the Arnold. I also think his body fat percent got a little bit too high, and I think it's time for him to start cutting. It's not too high, it's just, you know, high enough for him to start either a mini cut or a prep. And I think a prep for Arnold is, is the right answer. I think he should do it. If he decides to do it and if he announces it, I will be first on YouTube to tell you guys about it and to tell you what I think he will do at the Arnold. So guys, stay tuned. Do not forget to subscribe. Next up, we have Seth Ferrosi with another progress pick. You guys know that Seth went off the cycles, right? That's what he said. He decided to retire from bodybuilding, from competitive bodybuilding. Lately... He has been posting a lot of photos, and in all of them he looked really amazing. Every next one looks better than the previous one. He's making progress. Is he back on gear? I don't know, he didn't specify that, but he talked about a lot of things that he is doing currently. Uh, he is open about his gear use. He talked about the doses and everything, so that's not a problem for Seth. If he was doing something, he would probably tell us. He didn't here in this post, so that doesn't really mean anything. What he did talk about is, first he talked about uh, the, the, the progress photos, that you should take them, but that's not really important. What he says here is that he is 212 pounds on the dot this morning after cardio. So this photo was taken in the AM without a pump after cardio. And he says that he's eating four balanced meals a day, uh, and he has too many snacks. And also he <laughs> he says that he's doing cardio every day, four to the sixty minutes. He is training five days a week, a typical bro split, and he does some high intensity interval training stuff uh, for cardio two times a week. So you can get an idea of what his approach is right now. He is pretty devoted. This is not your typical retirement. You can see, for example, Dave Palumbo. He's retired. He doesn't even work out. He eats two meals a day. He doesn't care about anything as far as bodybuilding. He only does take supplements for health reasons. You can see Sean Ray, who has gotten pretty fat, right? 
he's on a beach drinking uh, cocktails or whatever. I don't know. I don't think he's uh, he's devoted to, to bodybuilding no more. Uh, then you also have like, Dorian Yates, who is completely like the opposite of bodybuilding. He's doing yoga and cycling and uh, he's eating vegetables. Like he's on a vegan diet, something like that. So, Seth, yeah, he's retired, but this is not your typical retirement again. He's living a bodybuilding lifestyle still. And what's to stop him to compete again, if he really feels like he looks good? To start some cycle, you know, nothing too crazy. To get a little bit harder, lose some weight, you know, show up conditioned, shredded, and like crack the top 5 easily at the Mr. Olympia 212, maybe even top 3, maybe even win it. If you really wanted to win the Mr. Olympia, I don't see any explanation for why he wouldn't be able to do that. I just don't think he has the drive. That's about it. I think he lost the passion for competing, for winning, at least Mr. Olympia. And if he really wanted to, again, physiologically speaking, I think he has all the tools. Does he have it mentally? I don't think so. I think he's done with that. But if he really wanted to, in my opinion... He could do really well on stage still yes that's my opinion all right for the end we have an update a physique update of ronnie coleman here you can see him training yes he's still in the gym still training every time i see him train in the gym i'm thinking wow this guy is still pushing it. he's still doing it and i think i will feel that way forever <laughs> every time i see an update i will feel the need to show it to you not every time but you know, from time to time, you need to know that that Ronnie Coleman is still training. Yes, he had so many back injuries and surgeries and all that stuff. He's almost uh, not even able to walk. But look at the bicep. He's still working out. And look at his, uh, his, his arms here. So, I mean, of course, if you compare it to his best... Uh, yeah, it's not comparison, but if you compare it to what he looked like after the surgery, for a guy of his age as well... He's still in shape, right? I mean, the body fat percent is still pretty low. You can see some uh, vascularity to the legs. He's not even walking. I mean, it's surprising that he has such big legs. And also the arms, yeah, you know, they melted, sure. But still, there is some muscle right there. But that's really besides the point. What I wanted to show you here is that Ronnie Coleman is still bodybuilding. The best of all time. The greatest. The GOAT. You know, the, the king of bodybuilding. He is still doing it. He's still practicing it. He can't let it go and he shouldn't. He loves it. He is the legend. He is the icon. And he is still pushing it. And look at that bicep. I mean, he still has it. He still got it. And I think this is phenomenal. It's very motivating. And I hope he's happy. I hope he's not in pain. I hope he enjoys these workouts. And I hope he got a good pump after this workout. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. I wish you also a good pump when you train. And thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, guys, please like it. And for more videos like this, subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much, guys, for watching. All the best and bye-bye.